Welcome back to the channel. Now in this video we check out a great beach, but do I get in the water? We stumble across a link to a famous radio inventor, but we damage Harry trying to find it. We get soaked through discovering a castle, but where is it? We get woken up by a storm, but does Harry survive? And finally, Stu treats me to a night at the mobile cinema. Welcome to Getaway Geese. We are Stu and Jane, and with Harry, our Ford Custom Auto Camper, we share our adventures. So join us in this Our Rough Guide series to campervanning in Ireland. She will, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I say we're heading toward Mizzen Head, but whether we'll get there today, I don't know, because we're, we're just going slow. And it's looking like we've got the beach to ourselves. And after some breakfast, we explore the cove. Jane's had a good morning swimming. <laughs> She's very pleased with it. Did really well. I couldn't do it. I don't know how she does it, to be honest. <sighs> it's a big wave coming. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> numb, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. You get to a point where it's just numb, so. It's good just to watch you do it. Yeah, so it's I was, really uh, good. Keeping an eye on her. There were some big, well, biggish waves coming in. I'm thinking, oh, she's going to get out in a minute, but she didn't. She kept on going. <laughs> she's in. <laughs> I thought that was a cry for help. Oh my god, I can't believe she's in. I can't believe she's in. I'm really pleased with myself because it's October and I've just been in the sea, it's cold, it's windy, so I'm like super proud of myself for doing that because it was just like, takes your breath away, but uh, I did it. I didn't swim far, but I did it. I just kept repeating, it's mind over matter, yeah. mind over matter. Well, this is uh, Gallico Beach, you can see the sand on Gallico Beach is really nice. It sticks to your feet. So the only problem with going to a beach is that you end up bringing half of it back in the van. Cold. You can see on a really sunny day, it'd be a, a great spot. You can't overnight here. There's no overnight uh, camping here, but come come for the day, definitely, because you, yeah, it's, you, it's just lovely. We, we just spent a couple of hours, and there's been a this Jane saw a seal out there um, in the bay, and a great big head sticking up. You thought it might have been uh, Finn at one point, didn't yeah, because it, it looked it the way it was. Yeah. Uh, but he turned out to be a bit, I think it must be a big male seal, but he's been there. He's been there all the time we've been here. Yeah. We've been here an hour and a half now. Hour and a half. Um, he hasn't moved at all, so he's, he's obviously likes the place as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of history here. So we just uh, found out, obviously, there's a link to Marconi, in which we're going to go up and have a look in a minute, to the uh, uh, the, the, the singing place. We'll t uh, talk about that. Um, and also there's the Fastnet lighthouse out in the distance. So you can just see Fastnet Rock right out in the distance. <laughs> to be honest, I only know Fastnet as a name from the BBC shipping forecast, as obviously Fastnet is one of those 
areas along with Dogger and all those others that you um, that they call out for a weather forecast. Apparently you can get boat trips out there which are well worth it. So that's on my maximum zoom, apparently the waves can crash right over that rock. That must be a sight. Definitely feeling like winter today. We've been so lucky with the weather since we've been here. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's, it's, it's all autumnal today, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Definitely. Blowy in there. Yeah. You're getting blown around in the breeze out there on that uh, brunch. So we're just uh, leaving Galley Cove Beach and while we we're here we learnt about a connection to Marconi which we didn't know. This It's, it's interesting we're coming across this coast and there's, you know, there's obviously a lot of fantastic landscape but there's also a, um, a huge amount of uh, history either recent history or, or very old history. We, uh, so we, we just found out that apparently there's a signalling building up here that was linked to testing that Marconi had done. Brow Head, which is turning into some, quite a steep climb <laughs> in Harry. Um, hoping we don't meet anything. And it's a bit tight. Oh, uh, so Harry's going to end up with a few more scratches. I think Harry's going to need a respray when he comes back from uh, Ireland. Why? I'm not going to go any further because I think it's a dead end. Oh no, it's a dead end. We'd better walk, wouldn't we? I think we'd better. Well, I think we'd no, because you can't park. We might be better walking. Oh, really? uh, worst case, I reverse back. Slow, slow, slow. Okay. Oh, Babu. <laughs> oh, Scratch City. Brambles. Mm. Oh, you know when you feel as though you should. Oh, it's the oh, sound, isn't it? No, okay. We made a mistake. We I'm going to count Jane in on this mistake. Look at that view to your side. You, you literally haven't okay, seen what's I've out got, there. I've got, yeah, I've got no chance of looking at anything. Man. Nice little tune going on. Name that tune. It's called Distress. <laughs> By Harry. Oh. Oh. oh God, did you hear that? Okay. Yeah. He's just gone to have a look uh, up the track. He's not going to be very happy when he sees the outside of Harry because we've got a whole load of new scratches on him. But I think they can be polished out. I don't think they're deep scratches. We finally discovered the location of where Marconi performed his tests, which was a short walk from where we'd parked. It was on this headland where one of those many Napoleonic signalling towers were built to warn Britain of any invasion from the French that Marconi had some buildings where his test equipment was installed. These tests were a critical part of transmitting Morse code and the first wireless message was sent to Cornwall. Many ships from that point onwards used technology that evolved from this and disasters like the Titanic and the Lusitania would have sent distress communications that would have been connected to Marconi's innovation. The site commands stunning views and you can see why being so high up that Marconi used it. What a place to work up here on that project. Well after that adventure it's time for us to come back down to Brow Head and head further along to the first of the five peninsulas we plan to explore, towards Mizzen Head, taking in the sights along the way. We let a tour coach pass, and I'm sure these are more frequent in the summer and the spring. And we finally reach Mizzen Head.
it's really windy out I'm not sure I'd have my uh, roof light up like that I think one gust and that will be gone I know the straps are strong but they it's still plastic at the end of the day it's mid afternoon and the weather is good but a storm front is coming in so we enter the site through the visitor centre and the cafe it's very reasonable at just seven and a half euros each but make sure you allow yourself a good hour and a half to walk around the whole site. It has great access with well-maintained paths to various viewing points high above the Atlantic Ocean. And we were just lucky in catching the weather right. Mizzen is a strategic point for transatlantic shipping and was the last site for many as they emigrated from Ireland. The first bridge was commissioned in 1907, connecting the island to the mainland and cost 1,272 at the time. And this is why we stopped. What a view. And in 1909, a fog signal station was created along with the keeper's dwelling. This latest bridge was built starting in 2009 and it took 18 months to complete. This followed the original bridge being declared structurally unfit in 2005 by engineers. In 1931, the first radio beacon on the Irish coast was installed and in March 1993 the signal station was automated. The signalling buildings also used to be the old visitor centre and was where the old keeper used to live recording all the activity in the area. Due to our limited time Stu and I had to split up so he went down to capture shots of the natural caves formed by the powerful Atlantic Ocean and I got a great view looking north from the viewing platform high up. The visitor centre has an interesting set of exhibits, telling more about the site, Fastnet Lighthouse and all the various ships lost in the area. We highly recommend coming here, but try and visit on a dry day to maximise the views and also give yourself plenty of time. So tonight's tea at Mizzen Head is a curry. So just got uh, some chicken thighs, peppers, mushroom, basically anything that goes with it, onions, and then a, um, a sauce that we got from Dunn's. I'm just gonna lay the rice on top and let that warm through. So these, it's these packet rices, nice and easy for the van. Two or three minutes, probably three, three or four minutes in fairness. So it looks not too bad. And I'm using some of the fajita bread for uh, mopping it up. Nice. The weather is turning with the storm front starting to hit the coast and by the looks the ships are heading for sheltered waters. We're going to sit out the storm here although we're not quite sure if that's the right thing to do but it'll be a good test for Harry. It's 3.30, we're woken up through the storm, I think we're through the worst of the storm, it's been um, 70 mile, 80 mile an hour gusts, we're actually right on mizzen head so that's probably not helping, but it's, uh, we're getting through it. Well we didn't get much sleep last night, <laughs> it was... Um really windy. Normally when you're in a van the wind's lovely to listen to um, but last night I was really uh, concerned that we we're going to be hit by something that was flying but the van was just very bad wind. So it was... Uh... Yes it was uh, it was it went on to about two or three o'clock in the morning. I did sleep the night before so I'm, I'm even more tired at the moment because I, I, I sort of got really broken sleep. But we uh, got, but it died down, and it's yeah. it's gone very calm now. Actually, and it's just started to lift the uh, the weather. But we got we got a visitor again last night, but this one didn't have an egg, 
it was a lovely couple, lovely French couple that are travelling around, came to knock on the door and say hello, which was lovely. Yeah, they got um, a um, Mercedes Vito yeah. camper van. Um, they've been doing it for about 12, 10, 12 10 years. years. 10 yeah. years, 10 yeah. years they've been doing it. Um, sort of very similar to the way our approach is as well. So they're just travelling around. But they've got a unique approach to finding a site, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> I, um, which, you know, we should try ourselves, but I just don't think we, we will. But um, when they find a spot, if it's quite near a house, they just go and knock on the door and, and okay ask, do you park. mind if we stop here? And everyone <laughs> says, yeah, no problem. In fact, one of the ladies insisted they went in and had a cup of tea or coffee with them. Um, so we've never done that, have we? We just tend to slink in and out. <laughs> So we knew that eventually a day like this would come in Ireland, where the weather isn't so great. And we're determined to get out there and still see the landscape. So we head towards a car park where we'll go for a hike on what is called the Three Castle Walk. Well, that was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it didn't I break. We forgot to put the... Round. Got to put the bloody cooker down and the kettle, which was on it. And funnily enough, we come across the French couple that we saw at Mizzen Head, who obviously have had the same idea as we had. There's an honesty box with a recommended small donation of a few euros at the car park entrance. Our French friends, they've obviously gone off. They obviously waited for it to clear a bit. And the weather did not disappoint, with the full force of the Atlantic unleashing itself during the walk. The castle is only accessible by the footpath. and through the driving rain and low cloud, Dunlow Castle emerges, and the weather makes it even more atmospheric. There's no drones allowed, which wouldn't have happened anyway today. And one of the reasons is there's a rare species of chuff bird that is nesting in the towers. And it goes without saying that we never spotted any. The Three Castle name actually refers to the three prominent towers of the single Dunlow Castle. It's thought to be one of the oldest Norman castles dating back from the 1500s, although earlier fortification go back to around 1207. So it's absolutely belting with rain, you might not be able to hear me. The wind's howling but definitely worth the walk. Fantastic ruins. Apparently over 800 years old, but it's absolutely lashing it down. The rain's coming in off the sea following the storm yesterday. It's carried on. So all I've got is my iPhone because everything else is going to get drenched. And as we head back and look back at the castle, the weather has lifted slightly and now we can see the castle in its full glory. Back at Harry, we discover there used to be some sort of boat slipway and winch system, but it's obviously been a long time since it's been used. We head back to Mizzen for a second night, and Stu sets up a cinema, although Harry has also turned into a laundry drying room with all our wet clothes. So, we have our new theatre, cinema, I'm taking Jane to the cinema tonight. But no popcorn. No popcorn, sorry. <laughs> so what we've got is the Nebula 2 um, that we've used a couple of times. And uh, this time I've got it hooked up to a Blu-ray player because uh, the easiest thing to do, although it's like a smart TV and you could do YouTube and uh, you could go direct off um, Amazon Prime or Netflix, 
um, depending on if we've got you've got reception, we've got pretty poor reception. But anyway, we brought lots of discs away with us this time, so we're going to watch uh, Band of Brothers again, which I haven't watched for a few years. So we're going to start watching that, and the idea is that hooked up to the HDMI will work. So this is working uh, really well because um, we can bring, even if we haven't got reception anywhere, you know, we, the only thing we've got to do is charge up the um, Nebula 2, which I can do off the power oak, and the power oak needs to power the Panasonic DVD. So what I don't know is whether how much that's going to take power-wise, so we'll keep an eye on that. Well, we'll leave it there with the forecast of another storm and we'll see you in the next episode. So thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video then help us grow the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. And we'll hopefully see you in the next episode of Our Travels in Harry.